This is east of Mojave out on Oak Creek Road. And these are wind turbines that have recently been constructed here in the desert. Permitted renewable energy favored by the federal government, the state. And here they are producing energy. There's a group of concerned Mojave citizens who call themselves Friend of Mojave that have said these wind turbines are going to be built too close to their homes. Within a mile and a half to two miles. This gentleman here, he traveled here not too far. Uh, Cash Peak? Yeah, Cash Peak. Cash Peak. Put here. Put here. He, on his own initiative, after having seen our ad, printed up a thousand flyers. Two thousand. Two thousand. Oh, wow. Two thousand. <laughs> and drove around handing them out and displaying and putting them places to help notify and get the word out just that this meeting was going to occur. I came here because I had a dream of open spaces, big skies, broad horizons, and I simply wanted to come to enjoy the desert, the peace of mind, the freedom, etc., that we do enjoy here. <coughs> so my wife and I pulled a large percentage of our life savings about two and a half acres in the southwest corner of Mojave with asphalt hands. Designed, had built our own house, workshop on two and a half acres. And that truly has been the answer to our dreams and ambitions. Planned it for about 10 years, finished construction four years ago, just now, get it to where we really like it and want it. Okay, so dream fulfilled. But a dream now at risk, and any dreams or aspirations that Mojave had of attracting diverse businesses, of becoming a residential community, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Now, getting back to my personal story, how it affects my dream is that, as you will see eventually, some maps here specific to the areas of expansion. Now, as I said, I live out at the end of Camelot down about 40th west, just short of 40th west. So I'm out on the corner of town where the asphalt ends and will be one of those most directly affected by this expansion. And I can tell you this expansion is going to come to within half mile of our residences. And these towers are not inconsequential. They're like nothing we've seen before. These things are going to be about 500 feet tall. Okay. So that dream of enjoying the vast horizons, open expanses, having a peace of mind of freedom, and, and, and enjoying the desert, that, that's going to be long gone. California's version of cap and trade, it's called Renewable Energy Credits, RECs. Okay? Renewable Energy Credit is something that you have to have okay, if you produce CO2, based on the amount of, of pollution that you put into, into the air, you need to do something to offset that. Right? So, the windmill companies, they get a whole lot of renewable energy credits. But they don't really need them because their things are harmless. Right? So they've got these things. So, so Cal Edison says, tell you what, We'll sweep the pot a little bit on the, on the rates, because they're going to charge just for those rates anyways. They don't care. Give us your RECs. Hey, for a little more money, here's my, here's my credit. So SoCal Edison builds up the credits, and they look like a good steward of the community. When, in fact, they're buying the good credit from the window people. T.J. Rogers is the founder and he's a uh, 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 Cypress Semiconductor, and he's a force to be reckoned with in Silicon Valley. He's an early equity investor in SunPower, okay, who's a competitor of solar. solar one. Here's what he had to say at a meeting, green meeting, green association. He started off his, meet, his meeting with, run like hell when you hear carbon tax. 
He says that he has a conflict of interest in discouraging dependence on subsidies. He knows that because it's allowed Sun Power to provide a 22.4 to 1 return on investment. More subsidies means more power for him and his investors. But he goes on to say, do not rely for long on government funding subsidies. They're going to run out of money. I was taking classes at UCLA, and I had part of that was some field trips that we had. We went to Marina Del Rey, which is the wetlands there, at uh, one end of the Howard Hughes property. And uh, uh, the people, <laughs> oh, excuse me, Stephen wanted to buy that property for DreamWorks. This was probably about like mid or upper 90s. And the people in the neighborhood did not want it because they want to be know about how important wetlands are. They stuck together. He did not get the property. Mm -hmm. And that's the key. They squashed any talk about the windmills affecting radar. Okay? If that's true, why did Vesta spend what has to be well over a million dollars to develop a stealth windmill? It's so that it won't affect the radar. And any documents that you see, any of the any people that, that get a contract put in front of them, they're going to try and mitigate the problems that you're going to have with your cell phone, and with your cable, or your dish TV, because it affects those things. Even the people at Horizon said, when they saw my map, I didn't think it was going to come this far. I didn't think they were supposed to go to the other side of the aqueduct. That's what a guy from Horizon said to me. And he's right. That's what we were all led to believe. So you have to get in your mind and understand that what we are undertaking is going to be massive. I will need help from every corner, like what Steve gave. I need somebody like Steve that stepped up to the plate to help get you all here. Well, I don't know if you know Mr. Schribner, but, yes, but he, do. yes, and he, in my opinion, has been very responsive to going out, listening to what people have to say. Now, now you're right. Now, listening is one thing, but acting is another. Well, this is true. <laughs> this is true. And so far, I haven't seen <clears throat> actions to back up his so-called words. Well, last week, they approved uh, AV Solar, which... Uh, is 5,000 acre development. I know, and I, I have a subdivision right next to it. Right next to it? Right next to it. The reasons and he gave were jobs, revenue for the county. So, kind of okay. gives you a little well, clue of where he's coming from. It'll mm. require about 200 jobs to build it. Mm -hmm. I call those super temporary jobs. Because mm -hmm. after those jobs are finished, yeah. they'll require 20 jobs to maintain the site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's not jobs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the amount of money that they're going to put into the deal, that's nice to see 5,000 acres under maybe $100 million of development. Sure. But it pales in comparison to real development of real urbanization, mm -hmm. homes, uh, mm -hmm. commercial, mm -hmm. retail. That's where the real jobs are, mm -hmm. schools, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. You're talking billions when sure. you're finished, not a few hundred million dollars worth. And sure. It pales in comparison. Mm -hmm. and, and the county doesn't want to hear it. Mm -hmm. so the county's told me, well, Mr. Tibbins, you've had 40 years with your subdivision. Where's the homes? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I turned around and I said, Mr. County, you shut me down in 1980 when you took out all of the infrastructure cooperation that the county used to have. Mm -hmm. and put it all on the back of the developer. Mm -hmm. Now the developer's got to dig deeper into his pocket to put mm -hmm. that infrastructure that eventually goes to you, mm -hmm. Mr. County. Mm -hmm. I said, not a fair and level playing field. My question would be, how is that going to benefit the community to have test training? All right. How is it going to help the people economically? Uh -huh. So you'd be looking for Mr. Scrivener and the supervisors to plow some of that tax revenue back in the schools? Yeah. And schools, uh, roads, back in, yeah. The streets. Uh -huh. Street lights. We uh -huh. need street lights in Mojave. Sure. We've sure. taking all the street lights down, so we need street lights. Uh huh. But yeah, I'd like to see a lot of that money come back into this community. It's about 8 o'clock in the evening and the sun is setting in the west.